Okay, today we are going to start a new topic which is called Python tuples. We have already studied about numbers and lists in the previous lectures that I have shared with you. And now today we will study Python tuples. So let's start. Tuples are almost similar to lists. We have already studied lists. And in list, we declare the elements in square brackets and they work like an array. Tuples are almost the same. It also contains heterogeneous kind of data, but the elements in the list are immutable. That means they are uneditable. We cannot change the elements of a tuple in Python. It is very simple to create a tuple in Python. As we see earlier that the elements of a list are enclosed in square brackets, whereas the elements of a tuple are enclosed in parentheses. So the first major difference is while declaring tuples, uh, we declare lists in square brackets. While declaring tuples, we use round brackets that we call parentheses separated with commas. So we can declare any number of elements in tuples also. And the type of elements is heterogeneous. That means integer, float, string, and even list can be a member of a tuple. So let's see through a through an example. Here we have created three tuples. You can also pronounce it as tuple. New tuple is equal to one, two, three, four, where it is enclosed in parentheses. So in this tuple, all the elements are of the same type. So in comment, it is mentioned it. This is a homogeneous type of tuple, homogeneous data elements. And now when you print it, it will display its elements in the output. Next one is new tuple one. And it is also having three elements, but are of heterogeneous data type. That means first element is of type integer. Second is string. And the third one is float. And this tuple is also printed. And now you can also create list inside a tuple or a tuple inside a tuple, which is shown in this example, new tuple two is equal to triple one, one Clara 75.5, two Simon and 80.5. So this is the third type where tuple is its, uh, is its member and a list is its member and tuple is its member. So let's see the output. All the three outputs are displayed as such. This is just to show that how we can uh, create tuples in Python. Next is unpacking tuples. What does it mean? Unpacking refers to separating members or elements of a tuple. You can also op uh, perform this operation on lists also. It is very simple. Suppose I have a tuple, see this example, we have created a new tuple 2 is equal to, it is having elements triple 1, then list as an, uh, as an element and tuple as an element. So uh, this is referred to as nested list or this is called nested tuple. Fine. And here we are going to print it. So it will display the entire tuple. And when we are going to assign values separately to different variables, this is called unpacking. And it can be done as x comma y comma z is equal to new tuple 2. That means the first element of tuple will be assigned to x, second element will be assigned to y, and third element will be assigned to z. And when we will print it, you can see output separately, like one, first element, triple one, then this list and then this tuple. So you can also unpack, uh, unpack a tuple by assigning the elements of variables to individual 
variables. The same can be done with lists also. Fine. This is called unpacking. Suppose you want to operate to you want to perform some operations on the second element and on the third element, then you can assign these elements to the individual variables. Next is traversing elements in a tuple. How to traverse? The traversing is same as we have done in list also. Before traversing, we should know about indexing. Similar to lists, tuple indexing also starts from zero. So the first element refers first position, zeroth position. Second element refers first position. And third element refers second position. So let's see through an example. I have this tuple. Data tuple is equal to this one, which we have already created in the previous examples also. When I write data tuple zero, it will display triple one. And when I write data tuple one, it will display this one. And when I write data tuple two, it will display this one. So this is explained through this example. The first three statements, triple one, then this one and this one. Suppose I want to access elements within a list or tuple, then similar to list, I can do that by double subscript data tuple one one. That means this is the first uh, element at first position. So one one means it will display Clara. And similarly, if I write data tuple two one, that means element is at second position. And within that, I wish to access Simone, then I will write to one, then it will display Simone. This concept I have already told you in list also, then how to access nested list or tuple. Uh, this is similar to matrices with a double subscript. It can go up to any dimension. This is two dimension. You can also go up to three or four dimensions also by including the subscripts. Next one is negative indexing, which we have already studied in lists also. Negative indexing means we can index the elements in reverse order also, such as minus one, minus two, and minus three. So if I write data tuple minus one, it will display the last element. Data tuple minus two represents this element at minus two location, and data tuple minus three will represent triple one. So by this way, you can display elements in reverse order by using negative indexing. Next is tuple slicing. So for this, we use slicing operator. We have already studied. A colon is referred to as a slicing operator. Suppose I have this data tuple Python. Then I want to access elements. First of all, its indexing will be done. I want to access elements from 1 to 3. 3 is excluded. It will display elements up to 2. Starts from 1. So Y and T are displayed in the output. Similarly, data tuple minus 2. It starts from minus 2 and goes up to last. That means if I do negative indexing, minus 1, minus 2, minus 3, minus 4, minus 5, and minus 6. If I do negative indexing, it will start from minus 2 and will go up to end because nothing is mentioned in the right on the right hand side. So it will start from minus 2 and will go up to end. So it will display O N. And in the next example, it is mentioned colon 4. That means first element is not mentioned but the uh, left uh, right hand side sentinel is mentioned. That means it will start from beginning and will go up to three. This is positive indexing. So first of all, let me mark zero, one, two, three, four, five. So it will go up to four. That means three starting from zero. P, Y, T, H. It will print the elements up to H. P, Y, T, and H. So this is how slicing operator works 
and how we can fetch data from a tuple using slicing operator. It is similar to as we have done in lists also. Now changing and updating a tuple. In the beginning, I told you that tuples are immutable. Immutable means uneditable. We cannot change the elements of a tuple that we have done in lists. That means the elements of a tuple cannot be changed. However, if a tuple contains a list as its member, then that member can be altered by using the index value of the list element. Let's suppose I have this list as member of the tuple. I can change value only of this list, any member of this list, but I cannot change the value of this tuple as well as this triple one. So let's see through an example. New tuple, this is the tuple. Now I want to change the value. New tuple 11 one is equal to Sharon. So I'm going to change the name Clara to Sharon. That can be done because it's a list. It is given in square brackets. It's a list. So 11 one means this is the location. This is real indexing of tuple 0, 1, 2. This is indexing of list inside tuple 0, 1, 2. So if I write 11, one, one, that means I'm accessing Clara. And now I'm going to change the value to Sharon. Then the value will be changed. And when I'm going to print it, it will display the output like this, where the Clara is changed to Sharon. And the rest of the output is as such. Next is deleting a tuple. As we cannot alter the elements of a tuple, so deletion of a particular element is not possible. Suppose I want to delete only Y or T in this tuple, it is not possible. If I want to delete a tuple, then I need to delete the entire one. That means, suppose I have created this tuple, Python, and then Dell data tuple will delete the entire tuple. And when I'm going to print it, it will display something like error that this data tuple does not exist. You can see that name data tuple is not defined, del tuple. That means we cannot delete a particular element in the list. So it will generate an error. Next is Python tuple methods. We have studied so many methods for lists, but for tuples, there are only two methods because tuples are immutable. We cannot change its elements or values. So any operation like insert, delete are not uh, applicable on lists. We can only perform these two methods, which are count and index. Count will return the number of times P occurs in the tuple. Suppose if I want to search 60 in the tuple, it will return how many times it occurs. Suppose if it is occurring three times, it will return three. And index P, it returns the index of first element in tuple, which is equal to P. Suppose if I write index P, index of 60, so it will display its index, the very first index where 60 occurs. Suppose if it is occurring at second position, so it will return two. So only these two methods are applicable on tuples. Next one is accessing tuple using for loop. Similar to list, a tuple can also be accessed using for loop. For string in, I have specified this sequence. This is tuple. See, I have given this in, this in parentheses. So this is a tuple. For string in bread, butter, and jam, colon, print, I love, I love is given in double quotes, comma, str. So it will put the value of str over here and will go through the entire list. It will print, I love bread, first element, then it will print, I love butter, then it will print, I love jam. So it will loop through the entire tuple until it is exhausted. So you can access tuples by using for loop. Now there are various functions available with tuples which are 
length it returns the total number of elements in the tuple max it returns the largest element in the tuple min returns the smallest element sum returns the sum of all elements of the tuple sort will sort the tuple enumerate returns the enumerate object of the tuple that means it will separate each and every element of the tuple that we have done earlier also you can do you have done this this is also some kind of enumeration then all returns true if all the elements of a tuple are true and any it returns true if any of the element of the tuple is true so these are the functions we have already studied in lists also so these functions are applicable on tuples and they are very easy to use and uh, but in c we need to implement each of them using long code but in python you can get the largest element smallest element or sort a particular list or tuple by just using these functions it is very simple and easy to use so what are advantages of tuples the first one is the iteration over tuple is faster than list due to immutability of tuples as already told you lists element cannot be sorry tuples elements cannot be changed that means when we iterate through a tuple it runs very fast as compared to list because no editing no add delete or insert methods are applicable on it so accessing tuple elements are very fast efficient as compared to list elements so this is the first advantage when somebody asks you which data structure is faster list or tuple then your answer should be tuples and the reason is they are immutable next is in order to provide right protection to the data tuples can be used since the tuples are read only data so if we want the data to be protected then we should prefer tuples next is tuples containing immutable elements can be used as a key for dictionary which is not feasible with list this is another example for uh, being them immutable that they can also be used as a dictionary this is another data structure which we will study in the later chapters uh, in the later lecture so we can use tuple as a key for dictionary also because of their immutable property and the last one is although list and tuple both can contain heterogeneous data however usually tuples are used to contain heterogeneous data elements and list are used to contain homogeneous data elements so it is clear that both tuples and list can contain different kinds of data dissimilar data but we distinguish them uh, suppose in a program we have to use lists also and tuples also then we should prefer list for homogeneous kind of data and tuples for heterogeneous kind of data just for programmers understanding to make the program understand better and to code it better we should prefer list for homogeneous data and tuples for heterogeneous data so this is all about tuples in python i hope you have understood it very clearly